All right, so in this video, I'm going to uh, start talking about social welfare functions. I first motivate the uh, sort of the framework, and then I'll talk about these three welfare functions. And then probably in another video, I'll talk about how they operate. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe in the third video, I'll talk about uh, this very important remark, which we will use later uh, in this course, especially, for example, when we talk about um, uh, externality. Um, so, uh, what is social welfare function? Remember, I said there are different ways of aggregating preferences. One way is by using voting rules. Another way is uh, what we call social welfare functions. What are the differences between the two? Well, this, the, the voting rules uh, mostly work with um, work in ordinal, uh, ordinal preferences. Ordinal preferences. I don't know if you ever heard of this. I mean, um, it, the ordinal preferences only tells us about how the agents rank different alternatives. I mean, one alternative is strictly preferred to another alternative. But it says nothing about how intensively agent prefers one alternative over other. All right, so the intensity of the preferences are not uh, included. So the intensity uh, kicks in when we talk about cardinal preferences, all right? And uh, in fact, these are utility functions, all right? So the agents have utility function over the alternative and agents assign a utility level for each alternative, all right? Well, so here, if I have, say, three alternatives, X, Y, and Z, and if I say, oh, X is better than Y and Y is better than Z for one agent, and then for two agents, so one agent prefers this way, and then two agents says Z is better than Y and Y is better than X. So according to, for example, uh, Condorcet voting, the outcome, the social preference will be Z, Y, X. Well, well, because the majority thinks this way, because two is the majority here, uh, one is the minority, and so the majority wins, and then socially best alternative is therefore, according to Condorcet, Z. Um, however, <clears throat> uh, say this is a framework where the government is thinking of um, a new policy on a specific industry, and these are the three firms operating in this industry, all right? And these are, uh, I mean, the, the, the policies, the policy X, policy Y, policy Z. The, the government's uh, objective is to find the um, a policy that's gonna generate the highest possible a profit, all right? Well, if this is the, uh, the government's concern, well, then aggregating ordinal preferences is useless, right? We should actually uh, aggregate the cardinal preferences. How so? So, for example, it could be the case that firm one is actually making $100 million profit if policy X is implemented and $0 if policy Y is implemented and actually makes $10 million loss if policy Z is implemented. However, the two other firms make, say, $10 million each if policy Z is implemented, um, $0 if policy Y is implemented, and then, you know, minus $10 million. So each firm makes loss if policy Z X is implemented. So if the government's objective is to maximize the profit, the total profit, I mean, pick the right policy that will maximize the, uh, you know, the total profit. Well, here, the aggregate profit, well, aggregate preferences, well, if they choose X, all right, so this is, by the way, X, this is Y's, I mean, U of X or pi of X, U of Y, U of Z, and here, this is U of Z, this is uh, U of Y, or maybe we should call it V, right, because... Uh, they have different utility functions, V of uh, uh, X, 
All right. So when it comes to the utility values x, the total uh, utility is going to be 100 uh, minus 20, right? So each firm is making 10, $10 million dollar loss. So total loss will be 20. So 100 minus 20, 80 million dollar net profit. If uh, y is implemented, well, the zero plus zero, so it's going to be zero profit, additional profit, you can think it that way. And if z is implemented, firm one is going to make minus 10. However, uh, each firm is making $10 million uh, uh, profit, so 20 total. And hence, the, the aggregate profit is going to be uh, plus $10 million. So what it says, well, actually, policy X is better than policy Z, and it's better than policy Y. So it's, it's giving me completely different ranking than uh, 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 what, uh, for example, uh, 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 Condorcet would do in an in a ordinal uh, framework. So sometimes we need to know the aggregated preferences, including the intensity, all right? So don't think those agents are always consumers or voters, so they could be firms, remember? So this is exactly why we talk about cardinal preferences. I'm going to call them utility function rather than uh, profit function. Uh, but, I mean, um, just, just be aware of the fact that utility function could actually mean, given the framework, uh, profit or some other uh, 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 sort of welfare uh, uh, indicating um, thing. All right, so <clears throat> this is why we have... Oh, I'm sorry. So what we do, we then extend our domain. So remember, P was indicating the set of all complete transitive reflexive preferences, ordinal preferences. Well, rather than that, uh, think about the utility functions. Utility functions that basically, uh, I mean, U that maps every alternative to uh, some real number. And suppose that the, the capital U is the set of, set of all utility functions utility functions that represents that represent a preference preference ordering uh, in P. All right. So remember P is the complete transitive reflexive binary relations. So think about you as the set of all utility functions you can think of uh, and, and that will represent one of the preferences in this set. And so what we do, we create uh, a profile uh, of utilities and then we map this into a utility function. And we're going to, uh, I'm sorry, right? I mean, so give me a preference profile, a utility profile of the society. My social welfare function is going to aggregate those preferences and give me another a social utility function. All right, so let's call this social utility function, utility uh, function. All right, so this is what social welfare function is. So I have three examples, but uh, let's stop here and clean the space. In the next video, I'm going to talk about those examples and show you how they operate. Okay?